My personality aligns with needing alone time. I'm an introvert. I have social. I have social anxiety. <laughs> I have social anxiety and I am extremely creative. In fact, most of my creations have come from spending some time alone. But for some reason, for as long as I can remember, I have always needed people around. To the extent that when I was a child, I refused to go upstairs on my own. And I won't go into too much detail about that now, but my mum could definitely tell you some stories of when she probably needed some alone time and I was not giving it to her. I'm very sorry, mum, I love you very much. I would always struggle with spending time on my own. I always worried that something would happen to other people if I wasn't there. If I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not sure where this whole idea of not wanting to be alone came from. It has definitely affected my relationships with my family and friends and in romantic relationships and things like that. There was definitely a point where I depended on people too much and I really struggled with spending any sort of time with myself. So it was extremely difficult when I came to the realisation that alone time is actually really good for you. I've actually only been able to manage this recently and it hasn't been easy. For some people, alone time comes naturally. I know plenty of people who thrive off alone time and they make sure to schedule it into their week and they take time out to do what they enjoy on their own. But if you're like me, that doesn't come naturally and actually you have to learn and practice this idea of spending time alone. Recently, I've had to really work hard at spending some time on my own and I can definitely see the benefits of doing so. But when I started, it was so, so difficult. I have a few things that really help me, but first I kind of want to delve into why alone time is so important. You can get to know yourself. This might seem like a very odd thing to say. We live with ourselves all the time, 24 seven. We never get a break, but you never truly know yourself until you spend time alone. How can you possibly know what you like, what your interests are, if you're constantly around other people? I really struggled with this. I had a bit of a identity crisis where I was starting to spend more time on my own, but didn't really know what I enjoyed doing. It took a little while for me to learn the things that I liked and the things I wanted to do without impressing other people. Getting to know yourself is so important for a generally well-balanced lifestyle. Build resilience. Building resilience is so important, especially in this day and age. We have to learn that sometimes we need to deal with things on our own. If someone's upset us or we don't particularly like somebody, is not always the best thing to go and talk to your friends or your family about it. Sometimes you have to sit with yourself and build a little bit of resilience as to why you might not like somebody. Gossip doesn't really help anybody. Yeah, it might entertain you momentarily, but will it add to your annoyance in the future? Probably. So sitting with yourself and building a little bit of resilience could be quite helpful. Come to terms with things that have happened. Most of my recovery from certain things has come with talking to people, that is true. Whether that's a counsellor, a friend, a partner, a family member, you can gain so much from talking and opening up to people. But unless you come to terms with things that have happened to you privately, how are you ever gonna externalize how you're feeling? Unless we spend time alone and come to terms with things ourselves, we can't properly articulate them to other people. And that is so important, especially when it comes to recovery and acceptance of things that have happened. Let your imagination run wild. Like I've said, I am an extremely creative person. I'm an artist and a lot of my creations come from trauma or the things I've read and seen and experienced in my life. And if I'm constantly talking them through to other people and not really spending time sat in front of a sketchbook or my iPad, I don't really create anything. And it's only been the past few months that I've realized my best work comes from spending time alone, when I am processing things, when I am building that resilience and when I am getting to know myself. Some of my favorite work has come from alone time and, and unless I'd had that alone time, I might have never created it. In fact, I know I wouldn't have created it. So if you are a creative person like me, alone time is so important. There are plenty of reasons why alone time is incredibly important, but if you're like me and it doesn't come naturally, where do you start? I put together a few things that helped me when I first started this journey into alone time, and you might wanna try them too if you're just starting out, or if you want some ideas of what to do when you're alone. Firstly, 
enjoy the everyday. This one might seem like a bit of a cop out, but we spend our days doing things that we always do. We brush our teeth, we eat, we work. Although some of us might be a bit more spontaneous than others, we do have some sort of established routine, even if it's a bit sporadic. What we don't do is enjoy those moments, those normal moments where we're just in the everyday and we're kind of in autopilot. What I found is I have little moments to myself where I am brushing my teeth or I am working or creating that is just every day, but I'm slowly coming to feel like I can enjoy that period. This might look like sitting with a cup of tea for a little bit longer every morning or in the evening, or getting yourself into a good morning or good evening routine. These are so important for self-care, I cannot even begin to express how important they are. The key is find the little things you enjoy in your everyday and just spend a little bit longer on them if you can. Secondly, listen to music. And I mean really listen to music. For as long as I can remember, music has been my escape. I love it. Lyrics are so important to me and I have so many playlists on Spotify you would not believe. <laughs> My taste in music has evolved as I've gotten older and I love seeing that progression through music. It's like having a little timeline of my life where I enjoyed this at this point, but now I enjoy this. I really like it. But what was also happening was I was having music on without really listening to it. I had it on to avoid the silence. I had it on as a distraction or a way to make my work a bit more entertaining. Now I try and have music on and really listen to it. I listen to the lyrics and I have found some of my most favourite songs doing this. The emotional connection I found to lyrics have also helped me with my creative work and come to terms with how I feel about certain things. So spend time really listening to music, don't have it on in the background, be present and listen in the moment. You could have a dance too, I find that helps. Clean. If you're anything like me, your surroundings reflect what's going on in here. So if you're feeling a bit of brain fog, your general area will be quite messy. I have found that when I'm having a bit of a low period, my room or my surroundings gets very cluttered. The problem with that is you are then putting yourself in a little cycle. You feel claustrophobic within your own mind, your surroundings feel claustrophobic because there's stuff everywhere and then you feel like you can't escape and it's just a little bit of a cycle. I found that in my alone time, sometimes it helps to just clean. And this is one of my forms of self-care that I didn't really realise and I always thought was a bit odd, but actually having spoken to people about it, it's not just me. Shocker. <laughs> I found that keeping on top of cleaning and doing it in my alone time really helped me to, again, get to know myself, get to know what possessions I actually want to keep and what I want to get rid of. It helped me to assess my history and my own personal traumas and things that I should probably address. Cleaning has meant that I have a less cluttered space generally, so when I feel a bit brain foggy and down in the dumps, my space generally stays clutter free. I say generally, because that isn't always the case. Read. Read, reading, read. Although reading is probably one of my favorite things to do, I have definitely neglected it recently. It is one of my most favorite hobbies, but I think I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it, which is odd to say because I'm a writer and I generally adore reading. But when I'm in a great mindset, I read all the time. I love reading. When my brain feels settled and I can just sit and dive into a really good book, fine. I will read for hours. When I'm not in a great mindset, what's a book? <laughs> I find it really hard to concentrate on anything, not just reading. And when I take the time to actually dedicate some alone time to reading, I found that I've got a better relationship with it generally. And it's helped me to enjoy alone time in a whole new way and I'm really grateful to have it as a little coping strategy as I go through this alone time practice. Learn something. We are learning beings and I feel like I've said that phrase so many times it's becoming a little bit of a broken record but I really believe it. Instead of sitting scrolling through your phone on social media which is okay to do from time to time why don't you use your phone for something productive instead? I've recently got into things like Duolingo where I can compete with my friends and learn a new language at the same time. 
although this is somewhat social because you can then talk about it with your friends you're doing it on your own and only you are responsible for how far you get and how much you actually learn i love learning new things i always have done and this is one of my favorite things to do when i'm spending time on my own cook i'm not a very good cook i should probably put that out there right now but it has helped me to spend time on my own following instructions has never been something I'm very good at, but I do quite like following a recipe. I found that cooking and making something that will sustain me throughout the day has really helped because I know I'm giving my body some goodness and it's also letting me sort of switch my brain off and just follow a recipe for a set amount of time. And it's a great way to just be in the moment, relax or not, depending what kind of cook you are, Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> and take the time to just be present, fuel your body and switch your brain off. I actually find it very hard to think when I'm cooking because I'm focused on what I'm doing. I'm not a very good cook, like I said, so I really have to focus. Meditate. People often switch off when I say that word. Don't. Meditation doesn't mean you have to sit cross-legged with your hands on your knees and close your eyes and... Om. <laughs> Scrap that. If that's your impression of meditation, please put it in a little box, throw it out the window, that's not true. Meditation can come in so many different forms. Even if it's just lying flat on your back, in bed, doing nothing. <laughs> One of my favorite forms of meditation is actually progressive muscle relaxation. And some people might argue this isn't meditation. I would argue that it is. We can find about it in the comments if you want. I've actually done a whole video on progressive muscle relaxation, which I will link somewhere on the screen if I can work out how to do it. If not, it'll be in the description below. And I've actually used this countless times and it's helped me to actually get into the more traditional forms of meditation. And I use Headspace for this, but progressive muscle relaxation was a good way to get into it because it helps you switch your brain off and concentrate on different parts of your body, which is essentially what meditation does. So I highly recommend. Get some fresh air. Walking. Walking has been my favorite thing to do for probably the past two years, three years. But going out and getting some fresh air is really important. You can actually combine this with a few other things on this list. You could plug yourself in, is that what you say? Pop your headphones in and listen to some music or listen to an audiobook, reading, getting some fresh air, listening to music, getting some fresh air. Fresh air is so good for you. And actually I'll probably make a whole video dedicated to fresh air because it's helped me immensely. And it helps you to kind of get to know yourself while also having that little bit of a distraction too. You don't have to just solely focus on getting to know yourself. You don't have to have this inner dialogue of, hey, what are you like doing? <laughs> you don't have to have any of that because you're walking and you can just take in the atmosphere and gradually build up a dialogue with yourself in just a normal and healthy way. Being connected with people is so, so important. We need people in our lives and loneliness is a big thing. In fact, if you think you know somebody who is struggling with loneliness, maybe reach out to them. It might make all the difference. And if you want to spend most of your time around people, go for it. That is exactly what you probably need. But just take the time to recognize if you are using it as a distraction from yourself, from what's happened to you and from what you've been through. We all need time to reconnect with ourselves. After all, we are the only promised permanence in our own lives. I am still very much working on spending time on my own, but I can already see the benefits. I find it more meaningful now when I do spend time with people and I don't feel that pinch of terror when I am spending time on my own. Alone time is important, but make sure you're not too lonely. Reach out to people if you need to. There are so many numbers which I'll pop in the description if you need to chat to somebody. You are not alone and please, please, please reach out if you need support. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy getting to know yourself and let me know what else has helped you down in the comments below. Share some love. I know you're all really, really lovely and I love the little discussions you guys have down there. And until next time, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Does that count as alone time? Don't know.